Okay. Now, the Scottish Greens will fight only three seats in the general election, with the co-convener Patrick Harvey standing in one of them. Add that to the announcement this week that it won't be endorsing any other party in the 56 seats it's not contesting, and you're pretty much up to speed with the Green strategy, one which has inevitably left them open to the claim in some quarters that this is all about propping up the SNP. In the first of our series of interviews with the party leaders, I'm joined now by, by Patrick Harvey, who laughed when I suggest he was, he was uh, 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 propping up the SNP. A but wry me, smile, let, Gordon. Let, a let, wry let me ask smile. you this. You are very proud of the idea that your local parties make the decisions. Did your local parties in every single one of the 56 seats where you're not standing have a meeting and decide, nah, didn't we want to have a candidate in the general election? All our branches made their decisions in their own way. Some of them held meetings, others would have decided online. So they all, they they all, all, all the 56 decided, no, nah, we don't understand a candidate. I, I think it's rather than we don't want to, uh, all of them looked at the resources they had left uh, after the seven national votes that we've had, including the Holyrood and local elections, that we put a huge amount of resource and energy into uh, and they recognised that this wasn't something that we were able to do. Last time, two years ago, in the, the 2015 election, we stood in about half the seats in Scotland. And I regret, honestly, that we're not in a position to do that again this time or even to get close to it. Okay. What we do have to do is focus our resources where it will really make a difference because I believe it's critical at the particular time that we're in at the moment so, so, that Scotland has a green voice at Westminster. I think we can achieve that, but only if we focus So, so this has got nothing resources. to do with helping other parties? No, the, the branches uh, in some parts of the country will no doubt, uh, as our colleagues in the Green Party of England and Wales have done as well, contemplate as one of the factors how best to stop the Tories. And if there's a Tory-held seat, I think that's clearly one of the factors uh, that people would, uh, would have in mind. Anybody on the progressive side of politics needs to be trying to prevent uh, the kind of Tory takeover at Westminster that Theresa May is planning for. This is an entirely opportunistic election that she didn't need to call, that she said she wouldn't call, and she's doing it purely in order to capitalise on a weak Labour Party. Uh, hang on, uh, I'm confused now because the two answers you've given seem to flatly contradict each other. One minute you were saying this was entirely about resources and your, your branches had all decided not to stand. I think it's overwhelming. And now you're saying about... you're not standing because you want to help beat the Tories. It's overwhelmingly about resources, but obviously one but of the factors... But it's a bit about beating the Tories. Obviously one of the factors that a branch uh, which is covering a, a Tory-held or a Tory marginal seat, one of the factors they'll consider uh, is how best to prevent that very damaging outcome of a, of a bigger Tory majority at Westminster. But look, the, the reality is there are going to be hugely important social and environmental powers moved from Europe to Westminster in the next session of Parliament, where many Tories want a bonfire of the regulations. Okay. That will literally um, put people's lives on the line. And a green voice at Westminster is a really urgent priority for us. Uh, uh, Maggie Chapman, your co-convener, she said a few weeks ago that you would consider, as you suggested, that a strategy of trying to keep the Tories out and not standing in areas where you thought that would, that would help people who are fighting the Tories. She also said an approach would be made to the Scottish National Party um, about a progressive alliance in what she said was the next couple of days. That was on April the 18th. Was such an approach ever made? No. Why not? Uh, it wasn't a discussion that, that took place. And it well, was why did she say you were going to make an approach? It wasn't something that the party had decided to do. Maggie was expressing a personal view uh, in, a, in an off-the-cuff interview. So, you know, the, the reality is the party makes decisions, not me, not Maggie, the party, at every level, uh, as locally as possible. That's the way we've always worked as a party. So, so just to get this clear, so Maggie Chapman, your co-convener, said there'd be an approach within the next couple of days. There wasn't an approach. Why not? She said she was expressing a personal view. In yeah, that and interview. why wasn't there an approach? Well, the party hadn't decided to do that. Our National Council Why not? never considered the, the option of, uh, of doing that. Well, look, actually, we, uh, after the 2014 election and the, in the run-up to 2015, uh, the party's National Council agreed that there should be some level of discussion uh, with the SNP about whether there should be a, a different approach to the, to the 2015 election. They weren't interested, and I frankly didn't think that they would be. Uh, so, you know, they clearly had the, the resources to fight every seat, and why would they change that strategy? Um, uh, I, I didn't expect anything different this time, so uh, uh, I'm not sure people, why we would People who that. would like to vote Green in the 56 seats where you're not standing, mm. who should they vote for? I think they should ask all of the candidates the issues that are most important to them. If, for example, uh, a, a voter feels that opposing Trident renewal is the most important issue to them, uh, they may, may find a great many SNP 
candidates who agree with them, but they may also find Labour candidates who agree with them. If the most important issue to them is ending the subsidies to fossil fuels, they're unlikely to find many SNP uh, uh, candidates who support them because they call for uh, ever deeper subsidies for fossil fuels. If the most important thing to them is a sustainable transport industry, why would we be sending uh, MPs from Scottish constituencies to go and argue for an extra runway at Heathrow when our public transport is underfunded, uh, unreliable and overpriced? What if they decide the Tories have got the best offer? Well, I think if people want uh, an ever meaner, harsher social security system that forces ever more people into poverty, then they really need to check their values. Um, yes, but there must be many people whose priority is the environment, who, for example, feel very passionately they don't want an independent Scotland. Who would see the, the Tory Tories party are giving the go-ahead to fracking, who would see the Tory party continuing to subsidise nuclear power while removing the, uh, the support from the renewable okay, energy right. industry. Uh, I think anyone who, who supports a will positive, you... sustainable vision for Scotland's future or the UK's future if they're committed to staying in the UK. Will we'll look at the Tories and think, you're not where it's at. Will you produce a manifesto for this election? I mean, the, given you're only standing in three seats, the green thing to do would be not to be. Think of all the paper you'd be wasting. We will be producing a manifesto, you the, will vast, be. the vast majority of which is produced online, as, as you know. But look, we have a stronger chance of getting a first Green MP at Westminster than we had in the 2015 election or at any previous election because we are focusing our resources and because okay. we are not knocking on the doors of millionaires and billionaires to fund a campaign but we're knocking on the doors in constituencies that we are contesting and talking to people about investment in a sustainable future not a fossil fuel addicted economy which is never going to last us for the long term but one that will create jobs that will genuinely serve us for the future. A social security system worthy of the name based on a universal basic income that meets everybody's needs and allows people to choose the balance in their own life between working, okay, learning, right. okay. caring and all of the other things that matter in life. Um, but unlike the SNP, you are a pan-UK movement, aren't you? And indeed, We're a global a pan, movement. A, pan, a global movement. A global movement, right. And, and you've, you say on your, your, your website, I want to make a real impact, joining forces with the incredible Caroline Lucas, who's the first Green MP, has been doing the work of 100 politicians. But that's not really what you want to do, is it? You want, you want to um, split up the UK so that you can't even be in the same parliament as Caroline Lucas. If Scotland, as I believe it should, has the opportunity to ask itself uh, the question again about independence and resolve this conflict between 45, uh, 55% uh, no vote in 2014 and 62% remain vote, in 2016. If the people of Scotland are going to make that choice, I will stand with but those who why, see why a positive, thing, why constructive relationship Why have you got this thing about independence? I mean, it's not, it's not these... obvious what the, the connection is between... Care, I mean, I'm sure there are many people in Scotland care deeply about environmental issues, but are either are deeply opposed to independence for Scotland or, or do just see it as a secondary issue. Yeah, I, why have you got such a bee in your bonnet about it? I, I, I know there are such people, and uh, there, there are such people in the, the Scottish Green Party. All through 2014, when we debated these issues at length, uh, you know that, that, that we were the only political party clearly and comfortably saying we have a, a clear majority of our members campaigning for a yes vote, but we have no problem with debating that in a spirit of friendly disagreement with those Greens who are going to vote a different so, so way. So if, you, if your main issue is you don't want a second independence referendum, you don't want independence, but you are otherwise totally paid up in caring for the environment, you shouldn't vote Green, should you? Well, the question about whether Scotland is calling for a, a, a referendum has already been voted on in the Scottish Parliament. Uh, I've no doubt that uh, if, the, if the SNP take the majority of seats, as they look likely to in Scotland, but the okay. Tories right. have a majority at Westminster, there'll be this tussle about who's got the bigger mandate. But look, the, the critical issues that the next UK Parliament are going to determine are what to do with those hugely important social and environmental protections, hard won over many, many years in the European Union. Do we want to hand those over only to a bunch of Tories okay. at Westminster? Right. I think a green voice at Westminster for Scotland is more important now than ever before, and Ac we have a better chance of the, achieving that if we focus our resources. According to the International Energy Agency, the biggest fall in carbon emissions last year of anywhere in the world was in the United States. Carbon emission levels in the United States are now back to where they were in the early 1990s. This is almost entirely because of fracking and fracked gas replacing coal power stations. Yet you are adamantly opposed to fracking on the grounds that it's bad for 
carbon emissions. It clearly isn't. It's the main factor that's helping reduce carbon emissions, not just in the United States, but also in countries like China. If we want to reduce carbon emissions and have a So decent, you're not denying the facts? If we want to reduce carbon emissions and have a decent chance, we need to look at the global picture, not just the picture in one individual country. The US... So, sorry, I'm talking the about US, the biggest economy in the world. And one of the most polluting as well. Yeah, Still, I, the US shifting to fracked gas uh, and uh, consuming less of more polluting fuels does not mean that those more polluting fuels are not being used. They're simply shifting elsewhere in the global economy. Right. Fracking is simply opening up a new seam of fossil fuels, a new roll of the dice it's of fossil fuels. It's much less in terms of carbon emissions from gas power, power stations than the coal power stations they replace. That's why carbon emissions are falling. But I mean, if, the, the other, but the if other that coal is still being used is nuclear, elsewhere which in is the global clean. economy, if that coal is still being used elsewhere in the global you're economy, you're against nuclear as well, which is the other clean, clean form of base power that's easily available. Scotland is well able to achieve a sustainable energy system without new nuclear. Of the that's two main things very, that very can, can quickly reduce carbon emissions, you're against both of them. Oh, you look at what the UK is doing at the moment with nuclear power and you say it can be done quickly. I don't think so. It certainly can't be done quickly. It certainly can't be done cheaply. And there are still hugely worrying questions about whether it can be done safely. Look, Scotland doesn't... But, but the allegation me. against you will that... be you're a lot better at being a Scottish nationalist than you are at being a Green. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've heard that and other very silly uh, allegations from the Conservative Party in, in recent weeks as well. Uh, you know, they, they keep coming up with uh, ever more creative uh, and, and not very well done memes uh, online. Look, the, the arguments that or Greens maybe, are bringing to the or maybe table with an element are of coming truth. from nobody else uh, in the Scottish political landscape about a transition okay. away from All a right. fossil fuel economy and investment in the sustainable future that All we right. need. We'll, have to leave we'll keep there. making that case. Patrick Harvey, thank you very much indeed for joining us.